We will start today on a course on political philosophy. Political philosophy is the follow-on course to ethics for Aristotle. Ethics and politics are complementary sciences or philosophies which together constitute a philosophy of human affairs. Politics is not that often studied, although ethics is. But for a true Aristotelian, as St. Thomas was, politics would certainly be an essential part of a philosophical education. If we turn back to the end of the ethics and look at Book 10, Chapter 9, we'll find Aristotle talking about the importance of politics for ethics, the importance of habit and law for cultivating in citizens virtue. He says, although people still argue whether we are made good by nature or habituation or by teaching, he said it is obvious that character does require nurture and therefore it's vital that from our youth up we've been brought up under the right laws because living temperately and courageously is not pleasant, he says, to most people. So nurture is something that our political community, according to Aristotle, would help us achieve. And at another passage, he says, legislators ought to stimulate men to virtue and urge them forward by the motive of the noble on the assumption that those who have been well advanced by habit will attend to such influences. So the next page we turn to the politics which gives an account of legislation and the political community. Aristotle, of course, sees politics as a practical science. It's not one of the theoretical sciences along with ethics, the poetics, rhetoric, Politics is aimed at action. It is the study of human action. It's about contingent matters. It's not a science like physics. But he does think we can formulate basic principles, general formulas about what is best in politics. So the focus of this class will be on Aristotle and Aristotle's politics. In addition, we will read some of Thomas Aquinas. Although he did not write a systematic treatise on the politics, he did start a commentary on the politics, Aristotle's politics, which he did not finish. But like other themes in Aquinas, we can find political philosophy throughout the Summa and other works. In addition, we will be reading books by two of the greatest Thomist political philosophers of the 20th century, Jacques Maritain, who should no, need no introduction to this audience since Professor McInerney is head of the Maritain Center. Maritain was friends with Yves Simon, who also wrote a classic book in political philosophy. And together, these two have the unique achievement of giving a Thomistic defense of liberal democracy, combining a modern sense of freedom with authority, putting together natural rights with natural law, seeking to combine the modern sense of equality with the ancient sense of virtue. So we will proceed by First, analyzing Aristotle, the text of Aristotle, and then seeing how Maritain and Simon have taken these lessons from Aristotle and elaborated upon them to make a very powerful account of politics. Let's first look at an outline of Aristotle's politics. It contains eight books. Book one is about pre-political life, about family and economics. 
Book two is on the best regime, or what people have said is the most ideal regime. Book three is the key book defining the concept of the political regime, talking about who is a citizen, and going through the various political arguments about who ought to rule. Book four is about political extremes and how to find the middle. Books five and six are about change or revolution in a political society, and he ends with books seven and eight on education returning to the theme of virtue and the great theme of ethics. So let's now turn to book one, chapters one and two, which contain the opening principles of Aristotle's political philosophy. If we even start with the first paragraph, we will see he starts by defining the polis. Political science is about the polis, the polis is a Greek term that means city. It's not a state or a nation, but it's a unique achievement of the Greeks to have organized themselves under a constitution, respecting freedom and having the opportunity for political debate and deliberation. It's this phenomenon that's called the polis. Aristotle then says of the polis, it is that association which aims at the highest and most inclusive good. That is, the polis is like other human associations in that it aims at securing some good. The family aims at the good of children, the good of household necessities and keeping various functions going. Various clubs may have other aims or goals that they have. Aristotle sees the uniqueness about political association is that it aims at what is often translated the most sovereign good or the highest good. Again, that resonance with the ethics should be clear, just as ethics is the study of the highest good for the individual. Politics is about the highest good for the human community. Therefore, in Aristotle's mind, all other associations are in some way subordinate to or part of the political community. Sovereign here means highest or best. It is not primarily the meaning of power, although power is involved. It's a more modern notion to focus on politics simply in terms of power. For Aristotle, sovereignty means what is best, what brings out the highest in human beings. It is also the most inclusive because it embraces other communities, affects these other communities. So his first way to analyze the political association, though, is he will make three arguments that man is social and political by nature. That may be one of the most important axioms of Aristotle's philosophy as a whole, one of the most important principles of Thomistic philosophy. And it does stand in bold relief with modern philosophy and modern political practice which seeks to start with the isolated individual.